Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we'll discuss a seldom touched subject in the guitar world, which has to do with the fact that there are some bad habits in the guitar world that actually hinder and limit the guitar player's musical potential. And not only beginner guitar players and aspiring guitar players, but also very, very good guitar players. But before we approach this difficult subject, I want to give a shout out to Leo from WoodenCapos.com, whose beautifully crafted handmade capos are, first of all, beautiful, and second of all, very practical, and you can get a personally engraved capo if you like. So go to WoodenCapos.com, he's running a really cool promotion, check it out and tell him that Lick and Ref sent you, or Asaf sent you, uh, he knows me by name. Um, so, by musical potential, I mean the music that guitar players make. Think about it for a second. When was the last time that you actually sat through a full guitar album? A guitar-oriented album, okay? No lyrics, no songs, just guitar music. It's really hard to do that, because most guitar music tend to sound the same. You tend to expect something from guitar music and very few guitar players actually step outside that comfort zone. And that is the problem that I want to discuss in this video. Okay, the average guitar player is actually very, very, very good, but only a few guitar players actually break the mold and make good music that isn't only aimed at guitar players. That's the main problem. Most guitar music is aimed at guitar players. There's a sort of a counterproductive competition in the guitar world as to who can be a faster player, who can impress better using their playing, who can show off better and pull off really, really difficult chops. And that's not what music is necessarily all about. Good music isn't always impressive. Good music is also memorable. And a lot of guitar music just isn't memorable. Good music is something that you can sing along with. And that's something, for example, that John Schofield is a master at. John Schofield can pull off some really fast and impressive guitar runs. But if you listen, for example, to his classic funk jazz album, A Go Go, you'll find out that you can actually sing the lines that he's improvising there. You can actually memorize them within one or two playthroughs of the album because his playing is so good and so natural that he actually sounds like a jazz singer, okay? His guitar playing actually sounds like a vocalist. And that's something that guitar players tend to neglect. Guitar players tend to transcribe and learn only guitar music while most other instrumentalists also sit and transcribe saxophone music, piano music, okay, especially for fingerstyle. It's really, really good to sit down and try to arrange and transcribe piano music because that teaches you a lot about harmony. And guitar players are notoriously good at soloing, but notoriously bad at harmonies, okay, with the exceptions, of course, of Ted Green, for example, who plays just incredible harmonies and pretty impossible harmonies on guitar, and that's because he sat down and learned really, really deep theory, which is something that most guitar players neglect to do in their search for more impressive techniques. Now, technique and speed does have, do have their merits, um, and of course, there are very fast genres of music that require precise technique and speed, like metal, all sorts of metal, heavy metal, thrash metal, and so on and so forth. And also jazz fusion, for example. For example, you have Alan Holdsworth, a classic guitar icon who actually changed the way that guitar players play. Because when he sat down to learn the guitar, he didn't want to sound like a guitar player. He wanted to sound like a saxophone player. And in that, he changed guitar music forever. He influenced Eddie Van Halen, for example, who influenced hordes of musicians. Alan Holdsworth also um, invented his own type of jazz fusion, which is incredibly fast, but it's incredibly interesting to the ear because it's not typical guitar music. It's not something that you expect to hear. And most guitar playing sounds pretty much the same. And this is 
what I want to uh, I want you to take from this video that you can actually play differently. You can create different types of guitar music. Um, even alternate tuning, it, you still get pretty much the same results from alternate tuning. You learn to expect what you can hear from that. And um, if you still don't believe me, I'll ask you a question. Think about your own guitar idol, right? And just ask yourself, how many compositions, original compositions by that guitar player do you actually sit down and listen through from start to finish? It's not that many. Most good guitar players, good guitar composers, have only a handful of good pieces. Even though they might have tons of albums, most of that music is still aimed at guitar players. It's still, the, the audience is still guitar players and not the general audience because guitar players look to be impressed while the general audience want memorable music that they can sing along to and hum along with and also just, you know, put in the background. The general audience doesn't uh, necessarily want to be impressed by the music. Now, I know that uh, some of you might be thinking, what about, um, you know, guitar players like George Harrison, who also influenced hordes of musicians. Um, George Harrison operated mostly in the Beatles. He had a really uh, uh, prolific um, solo career afterwards, but most people don't know the solo material. Most people know the, um, the Beatles material. and. I'm not talking about songwriting, okay? It's really easy to create good guitar music when you have lyrics in the front, when you have singers, when you're not the only one in the spotlight. And um, songwriting is something different. You have really good guitar backing tracks and accompaniment. But if we go back to the really good guitar composer state of mind, Let's check another example. For example, Ted Green sounds like a, co a complete orchestra. Also, Larry Correal. Larry Correal, when he plays solo jazz guitar, he sounds like an entire orchestra because he studied orchestral jazz music and also classical music. Okay, not just classical guitar music. He has his own classical guitar arrangements. And, um, for example, Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler is the epitome of good guitar music. Granted, he's also a singer-songwriter, you have lyrics, but his solos are memorable. You can actually sing along with his solos and that's why Mark Knopfler stands out, as well as, of course, David Gilmour and Steve Morse. Steve Morse has fast chops, of course, but he also creates memorable lines. We okay, listen to Steve Morse's Ice Cakes. Ice Cakes is a spectacular example of solo funk fusion uh, guitar music. And it's just incredible what he does there. And uh, it involves all sorts of techniques, chicken picking, harmonics, fast soloing, blues soloing. The guy's just a master. So what I'm trying to say is if you want to step outside the comfort zone, first of all, don't get stuck on the pentatonic scale. Okay? Most guitar players never step out of the, comp the pentatonic scale. And it's really easy to step out of the pentatonic scale. You just add a couple of extra notes and you create a whole different mode. Okay, I'll show you that in another lesson. Um, but most guitar players just play the pentatonic scale forever. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not groundbreaking music. And by groundbreaking, I mean not how you'd expect a guitar to sound. Okay, there are very few musicians that actually give you unexpected guitar sounds. And I'm not talking about gear, I'm not talking about effects, I'm talking about the musicianship and the composition. Now, before we finish, I want to go back to technique and speed for a moment so you won't misinterpret me. Speed and technique are very, very important musical skills. Okay, but they're not the only thing. And most guitar players, especially aspiring guitar players, get stuck on speed and technique and that hinders their musical progress because there's so much more to learn than just speed and technique. And they get sucked into the competition and the whole insecurity thing that makes guitar players wear ridiculous clothing on stage and crank the volume up to 11. Spinal Tap reference. Um, I'm not that old, by the way. So, um... Back to the subject at hand, um, 
listen to guitar playing on YouTube. And you'll find that a lot of really interesting guitar playing on YouTube comes from beginners, okay? Or amateur guitar players that don't have perfect technique because their, their music um, isn't perfect. And that imperfectness gives it a really tasty edge. It gives it a really interesting sound. While there are a lot of really perfect types of uh, players on YouTube, whose music may be beautiful, but it's stale because the playing is too perfect. It's too precise. You know what I'm talking about. And that's the best example that I can give about technique not being everything and speed not being everything. So um, even though, again, if we're talking about metal and fast jazz fusion and even bebop, you still need speed but it's not everything. Melody and rhythm trump speed and technique every time. And yeah, rhythm is also a technique, but don't, uh, don't be a stickler, okay? You know, what I'm, you know the point I'm trying to make. So again, step out of your comfort zone, transcribe other instruments music, okay? It might be difficult, but you'll become such a good musician by transcribing saxophone music, piano music, Okay, even sitar music. Okay, Larry Coriel, uh, there's a video on YouTube of Larry Coriel playing uh, an Indian raga on guitar, on a 12-string guitar. It's just awe-inspiring. Okay, check it out. And um, just listen to groundbreaking musicians and groundbreaking guitar players and try to transcribe what they're playing or find a tab and learn it. So before I leave you be, I want to tell you three jokes that uh, other musicians tell about guitar players, okay, to illustrate my point. The first joke is actually not a joke, it's more of a criticism that guitar players are the only species of musician who get really excited about something that most other musicians consider warm-up exercises. I've heard that said about guitar players, and unfortunately that's true. Running over scales all the time does not good music make, okay? Because when you have fast lines, if you slow them down and all you get is running over scales or repetitive patterns, that means that it doesn't, it doesn't make good music played fast. Fast music should be good music when it's played slow as well, okay? It should be melodic, it should be contrapuntal, it should have an inner structure, it should have motifs even played fast, running over scales, most other musicians consider it uh, warm-up exercises and just laugh at our expense, unfortunately. The second joke is how many guitar players does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'll just steal the spotlight from someone else. And that's the competitiveness that I'm talking about. Okay? Guitar players are competitive, it's a fact. Okay? I'm not saying that piano players aren't competitive, but it's a whole different type of competition. It's job-related competition most of the time. Um, and the third joke is how many guitar players does it take to change a light bulb? All of them. One to change it and the rest to go, I could do that so much faster. And that's my point. So uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.